The German invasion of the Soviet Union, codenamed Barbarossa, began on June 22, 1941. Over 3.5 million German and other Axis troops launched an attack along a 1,800-mile front. A total of 148 divisions were deployed to the campaign, accounting for 80% of the German army. 17 panzer divisions organized into four panzer groups with 3,400 tanks constituted the vanguard. They were backed up by 2,700 Luftwaffe aircraft. It was the largest invasion force ever assembled. The German forces were divided into three army groups, each with its own set of objectives. Army Group North was intended to march through the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia to seize Leningrad. Army Group South would launch an attack on Kiev and the Donbass industrial sector in Ukraine. Army Group Center's goal was to take Minsk, Smolensk, and eventually Moscow itself. Hitler anticipated to complete all of these objectives in about 10 weeks. The Germans got off to a promising start, with panzer divisions quickly pressing towards their objectives, and Russian forces disintegrating in chaos. Army Group North advanced on Leningrad, with Panzer Group 4 leading the way. Russian forces were scattered in this sector, and the panzers traversed 500 miles or 804 kilometers in three weeks. They were barely 60 miles from their objective by mid-July. Army Group Center also advanced quickly. By the 28th of June, General Heinz Guderian's Panzer Group II and General Hermann Hoth's Panzer Group III had encircled three Russian armies in the Bialystok Minsk pockets and captured about 320,000 men. Army Group South, under Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, had the most ground to cover, and his assault was met with the most ferocious Soviet opposition. This was where the majority of the Russian armor was stationed. Panzer Group 1 was slowed by Soviet flanking attacks as it headed for Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and key to the coal-rich Donetsk Basin. The Germans surrounded two Soviet armies on August 8, capturing 100,000 troops in the Yuman pocket, and reaching the Dnieper River. The Black Sea naval port of Odessa, was also besieged. Everything seemed to be going well up to this point, with the only major issue being the time it took the infantry to catch up to the panzers, and mop up pockets of Russian defense. Despite huge losses, however, Soviet resistance was stiffening. Meanwhile, the supply situation for Army Group Center was growing severe. Hitler decided to put a halt to the assault on Moscow, and reinforce Army Groups North and South. The German generals were against Hitler's directives. They believed that Moscow had to be taken first. Hitler, on the other hand, had different plans. He wished to deprive the Soviets of their resources and factories. The German high command protested vehemently, as the panzers were only 220 miles from Moscow. Despite this, on August 21, 1941, Hitler issued an order prioritizing the capture of Crimea in the Donetsk Basin. Panzer Group 3 from Hoth was sent to the north to support the push on Leningrad, while Guderian's tanks were dispatched to assist Army Group South in capturing Kiev. The city of Kiev faced encirclement after German forces crossed the Dnieper River on August 22, 1941. With General Heinz Guderian's panzers from Army Group Center advancing from the northeast, and Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt moving tanks across the Dnieper River to the south, the German forces began to encircle the city. Three weeks later, various German forces joined up. They were sent south to begin the encirclement of the southwestern front. 
they'd link up with the Army Group South's 1st Panzer Group, which was heading towards the southwest. The southwestern front of the Red Army, attempted to counterattack and break through the circle, but Germans were positioned on all sides. The command of the southwestern front, requested permission from the Stavka, to withdraw forces from Kiev. That the Red Army Chief of Staff would only issue a letter authorizing a withdrawal from Kiev, on September 17, when the encirclement was already completed. The Panzer armies made rapid progress. The 1st Panzer Group, which had turned north by this point, crossed the Dnieper River on September 12. It continued north, cutting through the rear of the southwestern front. It made contact with Guderian's 2nd Panzer Group, which was marching south, at Lokvitsa, 190 kilometers east of Kiev, on September 16. The Soviet general Budyoni, in command of the southwestern front, began to realize that they would soon be trapped and surrounded. The city was surrounded, with four Soviet armies encircled. Long before this, chief of the Soviet general staff Georgi Zhukov had advised the Soviet forces to abandon the city in order to avoid disaster. Joseph Stalin, on the other hand, overruled him and fired him from his position. Marshal Budyoni, who backed Zhukov, was stripped of command on September 13 by Stalin's order, and was replaced by Semyon Timoshenko. Stalin, like Hitler, saw withdrawal as a sign of cowardice, if not outright betrayal. Kiev, in particular, carried great symbolic significance for him, as the capital of Russia in the Middle Ages, and the biggest city in Ukraine. The fate of the encircled Soviet armies was sealed after that. There was no way to accomplish a breakout with no mobile forces or supreme commander left. The infantry of the German 17th and 6th Armies of Army Group South arrived soon after, as did the 2nd Army, which was also on loan from Army Group Center, and marched behind Guderian's tanks. They gradually began to close the pocket, assisted by the two Panzer armies. The encircled Soviet armies in Kiev were not about to surrender easy. Before the pocket could finally be taken, a bloody fight in which the Soviets were bombarded by artillery, tanks, and planes had to be fought. Kiev had fallen by the 19th of September, but the encirclement battle had not ended. On September 26, after 10 days of heavy fighting, the remaining vestiges of troops east of Kiev surrendered. Several Soviet armies, including the 5th, 37th, and 26th, as well as independent detachments of the 38th and 21st armies, were now encircled. The Germans claimed to have taken 600,000 Red Army soldiers, however these figures included a substantial number of civilians suspected of evading capture. Some troops attempted to escape. Only a small number of 15,000 troops, managed to get away from the encirclement. The German invasion began with almost 500,000 men, whereas the Soviets started with over 700,000. The Germans lost only 45,000 men during the battle, but the proportion of Soviet casualties was enormous. More than 600,000 men were killed, captured, or went missing throughout the war. In addition, around 84,000 were sick or injured. After this battle, the Red Army's resources were depleted, making recovery hard. More than 400 tanks, 343 planes, and roughly 30,000 guns and mortars had been destroyed. One of the moves that enabled the encirclement to succeed, was General Guderian's decision to turn south. The Soviets, on the other hand, were scattered, which weakened them. 
their defensive and counter-offensive strategies failed miserably. The Battle of Kiev was one of the greatest German victories of the war, at least in terms of scale. Propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels wasted no time in hailing it as a remarkable victory for German arms and a validation of Hitler's shift of strategy on the Eastern Front. However, Hitler was aided and encouraged by Stalin's stubbornness, whose sacking of his own top generals and insistence on defense at all costs contributed significantly to Germany's victory. Following the capture of Kiev, the German forces advanced to Moscow. But it was already too late. Immediately after World War II ended, prominent German commanders stated that if operations at Kiev had been delayed, and Operation Typhoon had begun in September rather than October, the German army would have reached and occupied Moscow before the arrival of winter. It's possible that this combat had a subtle impact on the war's outcome. Perhaps history might have been different if Hitler had not ignored all of his generals' advice and instead continued to seize Moscow. The Germans may have won the battle, but their failure to capture Moscow proved fatal. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.